obviously because we haven't done anything with it, but it'll start with ball going down being true, so it'll go plus one all the time, that'll stay false, so that won't happen, and then when Y finally hits the bottom of the screen, which is the height, take away the border, then going down will become false, so that will stop happening, and that will begin happening, and we will see a message saying ball Y flip. And what does that mean? That means that the ball should bounce back up. Come on, ball, you can do it. You can bounce back up. I know you can. Right, it did. It bounced. Celebrate. Oh, no, it's gone off the side. Well, what do we do? Oh, it's gone off the top, too. Well, to, to stop it going off the side, we do exactly the same but with the X coordinate. All right, so when it hits the right hand side, we want it to bounce and start going left. Same logic altogether. Detects when the ball hits the right of the screen and causes X to flip, All right? If X equals get width, so it's totally different. <coughs> height and width are different, right? Because we specified uh, the width and the height there. And actually, we don't need the border, I don't think, because on uh, Windows, the well, there is no title on the on the sides, right? So it should work. So when X gets from the left side to the right side, we want to flip the X coordinate. So we'll say flip ball X flip. And obviously, it's got nothing to do with going down. It's to do with going right. So we must need to introduce another boolean. Copy and paste that one if you like. <clears throat> and then write ball going right. Right. And that is true because we want the ball to start going right so it starts true. And you can line things up like this just to keep it neat. The two equals there. Okay so uh, now we copy ball going right and we say oh okay so when it gets to the right side of the screen, the far side, we don't want it to be going right anymore, we want it to be going left, so we set ball going right to false. Yes, that's correct. And we want to do the same thing we did with the Y logic with this X logic. Well, let's just delete it and copy the X log the Y logic here, and then clone it identically for the X. So, <coughs> X equals X plus 1, move the ball right 1 pixel, x equals x minus 1, move the ball left 1 pixel, and then we don't want this to be the going down one, we want it to be going right, if you follow the logic of last time. Okay, so what will happen now? Well, x and y are both done. So the ball will go down and bounce on the y, and then when it hits the x, it'll bounce back. Windows has detected that your computer's performance is slow. That's your fault, Windows, not mine. Run the program now, and we'll see. Um, it should bounce off the bottom here, and go right, and then when it hits the right of the window, it should bounce and go left. X minus one. Oh, oh it did, it did, it did do it, but uh, it just went a little bit far in there, so there is a little border. And there's one thing you may notice is it went off the top. Now, that's a whole new uh, ball game, but right now I'm just going to uh, check this again. Okay, so it does come back but there is a little bit of a border. <clears throat> Alright, well let's just um here's a neat trick, well not a neat trick at all, but we'll say um Well, we'll just take off the border, that should work. Same thing, right, but we'll divide the border by 2 using that, because it must be lower. So it's take away border, divided by 2. So it's, instead of being 20, 30, it's 15, the buffer at the side. Now we run. And the ball goes down, 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 down. Bounces up like it was, now come on, bounce nicely. Oh, still a bit too far. Okay, we won't divide that by 2. We'll just have 30. Uh, maybe I was wrong about the top of the window causing it. I'm not sure. 
Anyway, you need to take a little bit off. Bounce. Come on, bouncy. Bounce! Perfect. Now, we still need to fix the problem of it going off the top there. How do we do that? Well, exactly the same, really. Um, if you think about it, when to do the Y bouncing off the bottom, we check, check if it's um, the height, the size of the height. <coughs> the height of the screen, sorry. So how would you check if it's um, come back at the top? Well, that would be the top of the screen. And the top of the screen is zero, isn't it? If the bottom is get height, then the top is zero. Okay. So we'll just do the other check here for Y, the top of the screen. We might as well copy and paste what we have. And we'll say, detects when the ball hits the top of the screen and causes Y to flip. So if Y equals zero, and I don't think we need the border here actually, I don't think. If Y is zero, i.e. the top of the screen, then actually we want the ball to be going down again, don't we? So we say, okay, ball going down is true. And ball Y flip, that's fine still. So actually when we run that, what do we expect to happen? <coughs> well, we expect the ball to hit the top and come back down because of our Y minus Y plus 1 here. Oops. When ball going down is false, there we go. Y equals Y minus 1, so it goes down. But what? Oh, no, it's gone off the left now. Damn this program. Well, same deal. Very simple. What we just did there for Y, adding this, we do the, exactly the same for X. Copy that. <coughs> Paste it. And now, we, instead of get width, we say 0, because on the very far left of the the window, the X value at the very far left is zero, isn't it? So instead of going right, uh, we want it to, to go... So ball going right, we want that to be true, because it's hit the left side, now it's going back. So we actually want that to be true, and I think we're finished. Because when ball right becomes true, here, then X starts adding one again. So it comes back over here, gets to zero, <clears throat> ball going right becomes true, and instead of it taking values away that made it go left, values start getting added that make it go right. And I think we have a bouncy ball. Not quite a full game of Pong, um, but it should bounce around like my original demo. <coughs> and I've just realized that I got my director's account back on YouTube, so this could have been one video instead of multiple 10 minute videos, which is annoying. But I'll whack them all in one playlist and, uh, and I'll see what happens anyway. There we go, look. It's bouncing around. And if you watch this for ages, you'll find that it's pretty much will go forever and produce relatively unpredictable results. <coughs> and what we want to do next lesson is a lot more. We can change the color of the ball. We can change the color of the background. We can add paddles. We can add a scoring system. Uh, we can speed the ball up, we can slow the ball down, we can add little names, you can put your face on the ball, we can add sounds when it hits the side, it goes tink, 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 and it hits the wall, a, go a noise when you score a goal, lots of stuff, splash screen, about screen, centering the window, make it into a really slick pong game with the paddles and everything. But uh, that is not done yet, I will do that in the future, and hopefully some of you have enjoyed this or at least learned something uh, and you haven't been annoyed by uh, my constant slow progress and uh, coughing and the fact that I've split it into 10 minutes. Uh, thanks very much for watching, tune in for more and look at my channel, I've got lots of coding videos about Android UI development, uh, lots of other things about After Effects, Special Effects, Real Flow, Liquid Simulation, Games Coding, uh, lots of Amiga stuff time-lapse videos that I do, um, experiments with HDR, rotating tripods, uh, particle systems, all of that stuff, Unity 3D, 3D games, 2D games, zombies, etc, etc, Amigas, all of that is there, and it's a good channel, I think, so thanks very much for tuning in.